Welcome to the waves and sound lesson on the resonating air column that is open at both ends. This is the third in the series of um, video lessons on standing waves produced in, in uh, instruments. And these would be instruments like what's pictured here, like the recorder, clarinet, um, uh, pipe organ, etc. Um, there's actually quite a few that produce their notes using this method. Um, before we do this, we're going to look at a really neat demonstration on a resonating air column that is open at both ends, and then we'll come back to these diagrams. Okay, so hopefully this will not catch on fire again. It does? Okay, it does catch on fire. Jump in the air and uh, we've got water here. So go back. As you know, my hobby does the sucker. We turn it down like this. Okay, that was a pretty neat demo on using heat to uh, get air to vibrate at the resonant frequency in the in that air column that was open at both ends. All right, continuing on, uh, again, let's give ourselves our uh, standing wave diagram. Uh, this is an interesting case because in this instrument, there's no fixed end. Um, we have an air column of length L. And that's it. There's no closed end off of which the waves can reflect and invert. Um, there's no uh, spot where the, uh, for example, the string that it's tied off at, there's no fixed end. Yet, clearly, these instruments do produce notes. So, uh, you know, there are standing waves being produced in these air columns. We just have to figure out how that can be. Now, because the ends are both open, that means there cannot be a node at either end. So, what part of a standing wave, what is the smallest part of a standing wave that will produce the fundamental frequency that will fit in the air column of length L? 
Well, if we take a look at the standing wave picture that we just drew, we have to have the middle of an antinode at one end, and we have to have the middle of an antinode at the other end. So what that means is that the node for the standing wave has to be in the middle. So that's the smallest part of a standing wave that will fit inside this air column. So we would draw it like this. How much of a standing wave is that? Well, it's a quarter on each end, and a quarter, a quarter is a half. So the length of the air column L produces one half of a standing wave. The wavelength then would be twice the length of the air column. All right, just like before, what we're going to do is take a look and for each of the harmonics, relate all the variables. So we have V equals F1 lambda. And then we have V equals F1. And in terms of L, it would be lambda is 2L. For the second harmonic, what's the next largest part of a standing wave that will fit inside that error column, which will, of course, reduce the wavelength and increase the frequency? Well, that would be if there were two nodes inside there with an anti-node between them. So we need to take and uh, divide our air column up into quarters. So we take a quarter from the end here, quarter from the end here, and then we would have crest turn into trough, turn into crest, trough, turn into crest, turn into trough. How much of a standing wave is that? Well, an anti-node is half, and then we've got a quarter on each end, half plus a quarter plus a quarter. So the air column of length L holds one full standing wave. So for the second harmonic, V equals F2 lambda. V equals F2 times L. How does this compare to the fundamental frequency? So F2, we set them equal to each other, would be 2 F1. So it is double the first harmonic. You remember we call that an octave. For the third harmonic, now we would go to having three nodes inside. So we need to space that out correctly. So I believe that would be uh, six quarters. So we have to divide our air column into six. So just eyeball that the best you can. Messing up a little bit here. It was in the middle. And so now we would go crest to trough, to crest to trough, crest trough, crest trough. Okay. How many standing waves is that? Well, there's two anti-nodes there. That's a full. And we've got a quarter on each end, so that's one and a half expressed as a fraction. That would be three halves. So the length of the air column L holds three halves lambda. We express it as a fraction so that when we solve for the wavelength, we simply multiply by the reciprocal. So the wavelength is two-thirds L. So for the third harmonic, V equals F3 lambda wave equation. Now in terms of L, F3 times two-thirds L. We now want to compare the third harmonic 
to the first harmonic. So set them equal to each other and express F3 in terms of F1. And when you do that, you see that you get 3 F1. So the third harmonic is triple the fundamental frequency. All right, that'll do it for our discussion on an air column that is open at both ends. Um, you'll see more in class with demonstrations and et cetera. And if you have any questions, make sure you ask.